So now we have extra information in this checkbox. We can say if it's pending, if it's failing, or if it's pass. Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess. I'm a Power Apps developer. I'm gonna make the introduction short, but if you would like and subscribe my videos, I would appreciate that. Today I wanted to talk about checkboxes or Boolean values. So if we look at the information that Microsoft gives us, you know, a checkbox control is used to show whether a value is true or false. Later on in the video, I'm gonna show you how we can do more than just true or false or a Boolean value in a checkbox. But you know, we have a few properties, the default text and value properties of a checkbox. So let's go to SharePoint real quick and create some Boolean values. So I'm just gonna create a new list. I'm gonna create uh, maybe about four fields. Some yes, no checkbox columns. Um, let's just call this checkbox one. And I'll just create a few of these, probably fast forward. Then I'm gonna create one more field and I'm gonna do a choice field and I'm gonna call this one grade How about grade and we're gonna have pass pending uh, and fail just three different options pass pending and fail and I'm gonna pull that list into my power app I'm gonna to connect to that so my SharePoint And this is a new list that I created, new site. My so site is called checkbox example site. So I'll just pull that right in. And there's my list and I will connect. All right, so let's pull in a form with our fields. So we'll connect to that my list and we'll have in our fields. So you can see by default, when we use SharePoint as a data source, it does not set up checkboxes or Boolean values as checkboxes. Instead, it pulls them in as toggles. So let's uh, create a new form button so we can have a way to do a new form. New form, form one. And we also need a submit form. Oh, let me fix that. All right, so this is just basic out of the box power apps. All right, so we can do new form. We can turn the checkboxes on or off. We can hit submit, test with our grades. And when we hit submit, we have checkbox one, two, three, and grade pass. So let's convert one of these into a checkbox. Now it's pretty simple to change this to a checkbox. First what we need to do is go to the card, do advanced and unlock it. So we've unlocked the card and then we just delete. Okay, we've deleted. Well, now we're going to insert our checkbox. And we can give it a, a text or not. We can just you know erase the text. We can even erase the label here. And then we can give a text to our text box. So we have our checkbox back. We have a couple errors in here. It's pretty simple. What's happening though is it's saying, hey, we were using that data card value for the height and using it for the Y value of, I believe this is the error message. So you can easily just come back in here and fix it as checkbox one, I believe. Let's see what this is called. So this is actually checkbox four because I deleted a couple. So we could just do checkbox four and replace these. You can replace them or you can delete them however you want to do it. Now for the update property, what we're going to do is we're going to say checkbox four dot value. And we have one more error in here. The Y value, we'll just say checkbox four. Okay. We have one more error in here, the height. Okay, now we're done. So let's do a new form again. Click check, test two. We'll uncheck these and submit again. So now let's check out SharePoint. So you can see we now have a check here 
on our checkbox. Now that's the easy way to change a Boolean value to a checkbox. Now let's say we don't want to do submit form. I'll just create a new screen, a blank one, and I'm going to have three checkboxes. One, and you can arrange this however you want. Two, three, and this is checkbox one, or we'll just call this one one. We'll give it what you know a different name. Two and three. We have our checkboxes. They don't do anything right now. Um, even if we did submit form from here, it would not work. What we have to do is do a patch statement. So this is going to be a patch statement. Now you can name it save, submit, whatever you'd like. But on this button here, we have three checkboxes. So checkbox five, six, and seven. That's here, here, and here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say patch uh, my list. So that is the name of my SharePoint list. Um, the record, we can set that up, but I'm not going to do that yet. I'll do that in a second. Instead, I'm just going to skip the record part and I'm going to say checkbox one is checkbox, I believe it's actually five dot value. Yep, that looks correct. So I'll just copy paste this down and do checkbox two, two, six, three, and seven. I like how they're different numbers so you can see how the first number is actually SharePoint. So that's my data source. So if this was Excel, Dataverse, that's my my data source. And on the right side is actually the name I gave it in Power Apps. So now let's see if I can do this. I don't even have a title yet. If I hit save, it's not going to work because it needs a title field, right? SharePoint is requires the title field. So I'm going to insert a text label. Well, we te technically you don't even have to do that, right? You can give it any title you want right in here. You could say title is my test. Or let me get the right syntax. You can say title is test checkbox test. We'll give it, you know, whatever we want. So we can actually put in our own title in there. You don't have to get input from the user. So we'll hit save again. This time, when we refresh, it wrote into SharePoint, test, checkbox, test, two checks, and it did pass because I believe that's default. All right, so now let's edit. So in order to edit, in my opinion, the way that I do it is normally from a gallery. So I'm going to add in a gallery. Now this can be on the same page. It can be a different page. It doesn't have to be on this page. Most of the time when I do a gallery, I'm not going to have the form and the gallery on the same page. So I feel like this should be out of the box Power Apps, but it's not. So in the template fill, so that's this top section here, the template fill, I'm going to say if this item is selected, then we can say um, RGBA 255, 255, 200, 1, else RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, that gave us a yellow. All right, I'll just make that highlight green. So now when I select, when I press play and I select them, I then can see my selection. I feel like this should be out of the box power apps, but it's not. All right, so now we have our patch here. Now for the default properties, what we want to say is gallery one dot selected dot checkbox one. And I'm going to do that straight down each one of these. So the default of two. And the default of three is actually checkbox three here and checkbox two here. 
So now when I highlight, you can see it actually matches with whatever I had defaulted. So checkbox test has one and two checked. That's correct. Test two has the first checkbox one checked. So that's correct. And then finally checkbox three is uh, selected on the first one. So now I'm pulling in the defaults of those of the gallery selected. Now the next step, so now we can actually change our save button. So our save button right here before the record, what we can say is we can say the defaults, we can say the default is gallery one got selected and that's now going to give us the ability to edit. So now if we click on test two and we click all three, we hit save, it's going to edit instead of create a new line item. So now we have edited that and created uh, the default property. Now I'm just showing you quick ways to do these things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create the button in here and this button is going to be my new button. Now you don't have to follow this exactly. I'm just showing you how this works. All right, so for the new button, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say update context. I'm going to say variable new form is true. Okay, so now when I hit the save button, I'm going to pull it back out of that new form. I'm going to say update context. Uh, and I need my semicolon up here. Variable new form. I forgot my squiggly. Let me put my squigglies in there. Variable new form to false. Okay. So there's many different ways, right? Power Apps is kind of like math. There's many different ways to do things to get to the same solution. So on my save button, what I can do, you can do update if if you want, but another option is if variable new form so pretty much I'm saying if variable new form is equal to true I don't have to write that in there but but right there if variable new form is true then we will write but I'm gonna take out the gallery dot selected else we will edit and then we need the semicolon so let's see if I format format the text if that makes sense okay so if variable new form is true then we're gonna patch a new line because we removed gallery dot selected else we're gonna patch an edit okay and let me put in the title field the title field is now going to be text input one so text input one dot text let me put that on both of them Okay, so now we can write in here, we can write, I can say new and hit save and only select one and it's gonna create a new line item. But now since I hit save, we can come back here, edit and then save. And so let's check out SharePoint real quick. We have two check boxes. I'll uncheck everything and I'll hit save again. And now the check boxes are blank. Okay, so that's kind of how this works. Now I would do this on separate screens normally. So let me just show you just because I'll, I'll get that question. So normally I will have another screen here and this gallery or these items here and my buttons, but not the new button, will be on a different screen. So this is normally how I'll do it. I'll have it on a different screen and I'll have a new button and instead of update context here what I'll do is I'll say navigate to my screen 3 on a fade and then I'm gonna pass that variable through in the navigation so I'm gonna say variable new form true so right here I'm actually passing that variable as an a context variable to the next screen and then on on here I'm normally gonna have an icon that's like edit it'll be that pencil tool 
it'll be this pencil tool, this arrow will go away. Now you can pick your own icons and instead we'll say navigate um, to screen three on a fade. But this time I will pass the variable new form as false. And let's see, there we go. So now each of those is going to navigate away. So if I do new, it's going to be new. And I need a back button, of course. So let's create a back button. Back, and this is back. All right, so now we have a back button. When I click edit, it's going to fill that in. But when I do new, you see it's still filled in. So what I'll do is on the default property, I'll say if variable new form, then it's blank. And actually, I'll make this false. And so I'll do that across every field. So this will be here, the default property, checkbox two, default property. And I realize this is a lot more work, but that's the what happens when you use patch instead of submit. So if you really want to customize and make everything beautiful, the default will be gallery.selected.title, else it'll be blank here. All right, we have it set up. So now back, if I want to do new, everything's blank. If I want to edit, it pulls everything in. Edit a different one, pulls everything in. And I go back to new, and it's blank. That's how I would normally do a form in Power Apps. Now, let's take a look at more of this. I'm going to add in the drop down. So, insert a drop down. And the drop downs are going to be my choices. So, an easy way to, to get the properties of your drop down is to just go back to where you had the default properties here and you come up here and just take it from the items. So you can just see it's just choices at my list dot grade. So I'll just take that and put it in my own drop down. So now we just need to update our save button. So save will say grade is drop down one dot selected and that'll be the same down here and we need the comma okay but also once I'm done I want to navigate back to I guess it's screen one this is the importance of naming your screens so let's see screen one no actually we want to navigate back to screen two after a save Okay, so now we go back, we edit here, we say test number seven, so we are editing. I'm gonna uncheck everything and say it is a fail. Save, we can see that test number seven is a fail. Test number seven is a fail. So let's just do one more, let's edit uh, this one and change it to pass. Test checkbox test is now pass with uh, three checked. Save, says pass here, pass here. Now this is where I wanted to pull in more checkboxes. Instead of just using a Boolean value, I'm gonna show you another idea I had. So insert checkbox, all right? And I'm gonna remove the text on it. Or maybe we'll put it in as grade. All right, so grade. So grade has three options. How are we going to use a checkbox to show three options? All right, so what I'm going to do is on the default property, I'm going to say if this item dot grade is blank, is blank, then 
false, true. Actually, not is blank. I'm going to say if this item dot grade dot value equals pending, then it's false, then true. So let's turn one of them to pending. So this one I'm going to change to pending and save. We can see it's unchecked. Now I want to make this checkbox in the display mode view only. Now for the checkbox color, so what I'm actually going to go to is check mark fill and I'm going to say if this item dot grade equals fail then I want RGBA 255 0001 red see if I type that in right dot value so if it's failure I want it red else I want it and this is where we can nest if or we can go to a switch statement if this item dot grade dot value equals pass then I want RGBA 0 comma 255 0 0 1 else I want it green maybe not that dark of green let's or that bright of green let's go for 150 there we go so now we have extra information in this checkbox we can say if it's pending if it's failing or if it's pass so in my opinion we've now turned this checkbox into more than just a boolean value we can use the colors to create whether it's passing it's failing or if it's pending with no check at all. So we actually have three different values that we're learning from a checkbox. It's still using the true or false because if it's pending, then it's blank. But if it's pass, it's green, and if it's red, it's fail. So I just kind of wanted to go through checkboxes and kind of show you, you know, different ways how to do this. Now everything that I did, you don't have to follow exactly. I'm just showing you how this stuff works. So if you like this content, please like and subscribe. My name is Andrew Hess, and I'll see you next week.